less for those of you that are new to the channel, which is probably 99% of you because I see the analytics of my videos. I am someone who has a background in biochemistry. I went to law school for intellectual property. And this channel is focused on reviews for physical activities and adventure, just pretty much anything that's going to get you out there. I hope to give like a fresh tech review kind of perspective based on my background in intellectual property and uh, my expertise and experience in business. So hope you enjoy. At the end of this video, if you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you do hit the like button and subscribe. So let's get into it. So the big thing that I want to get out of the way is that this is not going to be is it worth it channel. That's going to be completely subjective. It doesn't matter if you make minimum wage or if you're a six-figure person. If you're someone who's saving up for something like the one wheel or any of these personal electric vehicles, that's 100% up to you. What I do want to look into is that if you are choosing to spend a certain amount of money, are you getting the product for the right amount? Meaning that if I pay $950, which is the retail value of the one wheel pint, is it the right cost? Now, I did another video if you haven't seen it. Um, I'll put a link in the description and maybe put a link right here to the Yeti cooler, specifically the Yeti roadie. And because Yeti's a publicly traded company, I was able to get another 10K and their 8K yearly filings with the SEC to see and try to calculate the margins. Now that's not something I can do with the one wheel because the one wheel is a privately held company that's made under the corporation Future Motion Inc. So all I can do is pretty much look at the market, look at the innovative aspects of the one wheel pint and determine where they land in the market and if $950 is the right price point for a product like this. So taking a step back just a little bit, Future Motion Inc. started in, I believe about 2013 by a gentleman named Kyle Dirksen who holds a couple engineering degrees out of Stanford University. My first introduction to the one wheel was off a Kickstarter campaign I saw while I was in law school in 2013, 2014. And I remember thinking, God, that looks like a lot of fun. But I was financially not in a place to even think about getting one of these. I mean, here we are six, six plus years later, and I finally got my hands on one uh, about four months ago. So... That's just a little background of you know how much I had to wait for something like this. And the one wheel pint at this price point did not exist. They started off, Kyle Dirksen came up and filed his patent, which is granted in 2014 for this self-balancing board. Now, one of the things I see out there when I'm looking at the, the comments about the board is a lot of people wish that there was competition for the one wheel, something that's similar. And there is. In the personal electric vehicle market, you have an abundance of companies out there. Notably, I would say the big competitors for one wheel would be Boosted Boards and Evolve Skateboards, both of which don't make anything like this, but they make scooters or they make electric skateboards. The first time I saw an electric skateboard was on Casey Neistat's video when he was introduced to the Boosted Board. Now for the market for these electric vehicles, is anywhere from the range of the super cheap about a hundred dollars all the way up to two thousand plus for more premium stuff and i think somewhere in there you lose your return on investment like you're not exponentially getting a better product for the price and before the pint came out future motion came out with the one wheel xr that's priced at retail i believe around eighteen hundred dollars when i saw that at the time i could afford it it wasn't something that i was interested in because for my purposes, I live here in South Beach and there's everything within a mile radius that you can possibly imagine from me. So I was looking for something that would supplement my bike, which I already have, and not have to take my vehicle. If I, if I go somewhere to the grocery store and have a lot of things to get, I'm still going to use my bike with the bags on the back and my rack. If it's something quick, if I just got to run to Walgreens or CVS, I just hop on my one wheel. But I've also come to enjoy joyriding on it. So spending $1,800 for something that was going to be for joy rides and just quick stops and for what I needed for just didn't make a lot of sense. And at that price point, it may not make a lot of sense for a lot of people. 
because if you're talking about $1,800, you're talking on the upper, upper echelon of these personal electric vehicles. Whereas this $950 product lands smack dab right in the middle from everything I've seen. It's comparable to about the $750 price point to the very popular boosted mini, but it differs in the fact of what it is. So if you break down the subcomponents of it, you've got a, you've got the battery, you've got this brushless motor, and you've got lights, you've got all this machinery. And I'd like to even go back to the fact that on the box, when you get it, and even on the website, it says that it's designed and assembled in the USA. A lot of people are using this, and I believe it's a marketing technique as far as the design. Apple's one, they're saying design in Cupertino, California. Okay, we know that you're making your products over in Foxconn in China under maybe not so ideal conditions. However, assembled is about as close as you're gonna get to something that's fully manufactured and made in the United States. Assembled means that they're actually putting the product and facility here. It's taking the subcomponents and putting them together to deliver the final product, which is a very good thing. It's creating jobs in the United States, specifically I believe this is in San Jose, California, of uh, people in an assembly line putting things together. And because of all the different subcomponents and how sensitive they are, you've got front pad sensors, you've got lights, you've got the motor, you've got the battery, they're able to individually test all the components as they put them together to ensure that you're getting a fully workable and high quality products. There's even a video on Adam Savage's channel, uh, the guy from Mythbusters uh, tested that he gets to go to the facility and assemble his own one wheel XR. So there you can see Kyle Dirksen walking them through the process and seeing how they test everything, put it together, and it gives you confidence in the product. So when you're taking this all into consideration, you're looking at the market for these personal electric vehicles, the patent I think is number one. Kyle Dirksen fully, fully has earned the right to take full advantage of having this product and being the sole person who can sell it under future motion. It was, again, the patent was filed in 2014, so he has 20 years, but, and also here, he has simple stop technology that he's recently patented, which with the XR, the dismounting is maybe something difficult for new people to get a hold of, whereas this, it's something you can turn off. I personally keep it on because it works great at stoplights. It rolls backwards, and stops, disengages the motor, and you can safely get off. Now, if we wanna talk about like the riding and how fun it is, I, I can't imagine anything being more fun than riding this one wheel around. It feels like snowboarding. It's very smooth. The term that a lot of people like to give it is called floating. And it's just something exciting that I like to take out if I can find any excuse to. As far as fitness goes, there's going to be a lot of things I review that are related to fitness, getting your heart rate up. I wouldn't say that this is anything you could be considered for exercise. I would say that after long periods of time, my legs may get a little sore, but my heart rate's not elevated, nothing. In fact, if it's a hot day or I don't feel like exerting myself, I will take this instead of my bike around the beach just because I'm not doing really anything except going around. Learning curve for this thing. Uh, when I first got it, I did skateboard, I uh, got decades ago. I have snowboarded, I've done that. I wouldn't say I'm an expert at board sports, but for me, I picked it up rather quickly. I am super comfortable on it now. I don't have any worries about falling on it or anything. It just feels pretty sturdy. Even with the kickback that you get when you top it out at 16 miles per hour, I've never felt any need to nosedive. There, I'm sure there could possibly be some mechanical failures in the future but you're gonna get that with anything that's electric. It's just the way mechanisms work. Now I do wanna end this with something that I found interesting with my experience with the one wheel. Here at the beach, the boardwalks and other certain areas are off limits to personal electric vehicles. If it's got a motor in it and it's helping you propel, it's not allowed. However, I didn't know that until I was pulled over by a park ranger and he was very nice about it, explaining it, told me I wasn't being a nuisance, it's just rules are rules, we prefer you to be on the street, and I was like, that's okay. But, you know, I didn't take it on the street, I took it on the sand. Which, side note, that's another great thing about this baby, 
because of the one wheel and the heft of the wheel, you can take this on sand, you can take this on grass, you can take this on gravel, and that's something that electric skateboards can't do. What electric skateboards can do is be inconspicuous to park rangers that are on high alert if they can hide the remote in their hand. So I see a lot of Evolve and boosted boards around the beach on the boardwalk that go around with absolutely no problem. There is no way that you can propel this thing without having an electric motor in it. Again, wrap it up. Just want to remind yourself, my name is Wes. I appreciate you watching if you've made it this far. Please like, please subscribe. This thing is a hell of a lot of fun if you're looking at any of these personal electric vehicles and you don't have to go anywhere beyond you know, maybe a four mile, because I'm thinking there and back, or if you have eight miles and you have somewhere to charge, that th this pint, th there's nothing else that beats it. It is the, I'd say it is the tip top as far as innovation and the price point that you are getting what you paid for. So appreciate you watching. Again, like, subscribe, please comment if you have any differing opinions or want to offer any additional opinions that we can discuss. Uh, I try to be pretty active in the comments, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Go do some awesome.